Hello everyone. Good morning, good evening to wherever you're joining in and welcome to yet another webinar by Product School. Today we are going to talk about a 30-60-90 plan for product managers. Before we begin, uh, a quick introduction about myself. So my name is Zafir Rais. Uh, I'm currently working as a senior product manager at uh, Zalando, uh, one of the leading fashion e-commerce stores uh, uh, based out of uh, Berlin and in uh, Europe. Uh, moving on to the topic. Uh, well, when you hear 30, 60, 90, uh, I know it may sound like uh, the angles of a triangle, but in reality, what is a 30, 60, 90 uh, plan? So 30, 60, 90 over here represents the number of days and a 30, 60, 90 uh, day plan is a set of objectives for new employees to achieve in their first 30, 60 on, uh, and 90 days on the job. So uh, basically it's a 90 day, uh, three month, uh, three month plan for any new employee who is joining in as a product manager. Uh, the plan is meant to smoothen the transition into a new role. Uh, now, this can be if you're moving from, from some other domain into product management or in a new role as a product manager. Uh, it gives you direction uh, to what can be a very confusing time, uh, the, the initial days of starting a new job. Uh, it also allows the employee and the managers to set, set expectations and monitor their progress. Uh, as uh, as any good manager, you should always have a set of metrics that you want to be measured on in these 90 days. Uh, and finally, uh, it's a personal definition of what success would mean for you in the first three months uh, at your new job. Now, this method, uh, uh, this plan, this 30, 60, 90 plan is something that should be used. Uh, when you're joining in uh, in a new uh, when you're joining in a new company and it is most often also used as an evaluation criteria so this question could be asked as part of your interview process as well you know it could be a take home assignment to come up with the 30 60 90 plan or uh, it might be a question posed by the interviewer during the selection stage wherein you can be asked what's your uh, three month plan uh, for you know if you if you're selected and if you join as a product manager so let's see from my experience as to how do you make that plan and how do you go about it so uh these three months uh as part of the 30 60 90 plan are divided into 30 30 30 days uh period of every month uh and as i like to see it each of these 30 days can be divided into a specific focused area something that you can do in these 30 days so the first 30 days that is days 1 to 30 are the observation stage so in this phase you're supposed to observe you're supposed to grasp as much as possible uh, learn new things uh, which will help you excel in your new role uh, when it comes to observation there are different areas uh, or rather different streams which i would want you to observe to be successful the first one is the people so observe the people uh, that you're going to work with now stakeholder management is a very important skill uh, that is required to be uh, to be successful as a product manager so what you should be doing in these 30 days is meeting as many people as possible in the company uh, now these could be important stakeholders that are that you will be working with uh, through this journey uh, it could be the engineering team, it could be the success management team, the sales team, uh, other product managers. Uh, uh, it could also be the marketing team, the support team. So all the different functions that you think are important. Uh, so first 30 days uh, in terms of people, it is very important to get that relationship building going, uh, improve your stakeholder management skills. Uh, as already mentioned, the stakeholders. Uh, you also should be setting up casual one-on-ones to know everyone. Uh, so, you know, uh, if you're working remotely or if you're working in an office, if you're working in an office, office, it's great. You can meet them up for lunch. Uh, you can take people out for coffees. Set up that personal wrapper before you get into a professional uh, 
uh, before you before you build a professional relationship with these uh, individuals uh, but setting up casual one on ones getting to know each other uh, an introductory call is very important in these first 30 days uh invite them for coffee or uh, you know another interesting thing you could do over here is have lunch with different sets of people every day i know as as humans we tend to form our groups very uh, early on when we are there, when we are in a new setting but uh, and I, th i think if you really want to improve your networking skills uh, try to ensure that you have lunch with a different set of group uh, every day so that you get to know more and more people and you keep increasing your uh, networking skills uh we're going to quickly look into what is called as the power influence uh, grid uh this will be very helpful once you're familiar with the people in the organization so uh this is what i call as the power influence grid uh if you see uh, it's a grid uh, it's divided into four quadrants uh the four quadrants uh, talk about keep satisfied engage and consult monitor and keep informed if you see the x and y axis uh it is divided into the influence or the power uh that is uh, on the y axis you have the influence or the power which is exhibited by the individual and the x axis is the interest in the product so based on the interest in the project or the product uh, that you're working on and the influence or the power that they uh, that they command you're supposed to keep them informed satisfied you're supposed to engage with them and finally you're supposed or you're simply supposed to monitor them if uh you know if if they have a sphere of influence which is less than yours uh it so what does the power influence grid does it helps you identify uh, identify how each stakeholder should be engaged uh another important thing over here is you need to know your manager so when we talk about observing people uh, in the first 30 days uh, uh know the style of your managers working uh, the likes the dislikes what is important to the manager uh, etc cetera, etc cetera. uh an important growth tip over here set up a weekly or maybe a fortnightly uh, one is to one with your manager so you need to have these regular check ins and take the uh, initiative be proactive and set this up uh, with your manager yourself uh set a target uh so you need to set a target of getting to know x number of people in the in the first 30 days uh because you would not really get this opportunity again once once you uh, pick up with things once you're really involved in the day to day of uh, the product management role that you've signed up for it will be very difficult to meet and greet new people so take this opportunity the first 30 days meet and greet uh, new people as much as possible uh you know before we close this section i uh, quickly want to give an example of the power influence grid now the what uh, how do you define the how or rather how do you place people in the power influence grid now let's take the example uh, of a big organization uh, you have about 50 to 100 product managers uh, and you have the cpo the chief product officer now the chief product officer uh, obviously would have a, a very high influence or power uh, within uh, within the framework uh, however if the product or feature that you're working on right now is is not that critical i would say or is is a comparatively smaller feature so the the interest in the prod, uh, product of the cpo would be less uh, but the influence is very high so in this case you will uh, keep the stakeholders satisfied right at the same time uh, talking about your manager right so your manager is working with you directly he's really involved in uh, uh, the the project that you're working on or the product that you're working on the interest is really high at the same time the influence or the power that they command is also very high so in this case you will keep them in the engage and consult quadrant now what each of these quadrants represent is how much uh, uh, how how do you involve your stakeholders so engage and consult means you would actively keep them informed as to what's happening you would consult with them you would take your opinion you would make sure that they know of every step uh keep informed uh, would be someone uh, who you know you would you would keep them in let's say in the in the cc of emails and uh, this is just an fyi 
uh, when in terms of monitor, this is something that you would uh, look into for people who are your subordinates. Uh, maybe maybe you're managing them and they're not really involved in this project. Uh, so these are the kind of people that uh, you would monitor. And we've already seen the example of satisfied. Moving forward, uh, the next observation area is the product, right? Now, the product is going to be your bread and butter. So it's time to get familiar with the details of the product, right? So uh, you need to spend a lot of time on the product, play around with the product, uh, ask product walkthroughs from different people. Uh, what it does is it helps you understand how different stakeholders perceive the product. So uh, make, an, uh, make it a point uh, to set up these product demo calls from different stakeholders. So it could be other uh, fellow product managers or uh, it could be the QA team, it could be the engineering team. So what it does is it gives, it helps you get a different perspective every time uh, you go into the product. At the same time, you're getting to know different things about the product. Uh, uh, also, you need to check with engineering on any open bugs, uh, right? So this will give you an idea about the overall health of the product. Uh, how good is the product performing? What's the kind of quality that the product is de uh, delivering? Uh, work with the team to understand the product backlog. Uh, just because you've joined uh, the team as a product manager doesn't mean that there is no product backlog. The team has been working on something. The team already might be having plans of something that they are uh, going to work in the near future. So it's really important that you take a stock of what is the product backlog and what is the roadmap which is already planned. Uh, what are the other add-on activities? Uh, well, uh, uh, rapport building will be really critical, right? So this uh, giving a product demo or, uh, 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 you know, spending time with you, explaining the product or uh, building this rapport with you is, is obviously an add-on activity for the different stakeholders that we've discussed in the previous slide. Uh, Hence, you know, people would be hesitant. They would already have a bunch of things that they're supposed to do. They have their busy, busy schedules. And if they're finding time from their busy schedules to help you with this, I think uh, uh, something that will play a very critical role in this case would be the kind of rapport that you're building. Hence, the rapport building is really important because they are dedicating their precious time uh, to all of these add-on activities uh, for you. Uh, you can set a target. Uh, now, the target could be to be able to give a product demo yourself at the end of 30 days. Uh, you know, at the end, I would uh, uh, combining the people and the product. I think one of the very important stakeholders that you have in this case are the customers and the users. Uh, the customers are the lifeblood of your business. Uh, so try to talk to a few customers, try to talk to a few users. You know, maybe you can join in as a mere spectator. Uh, in a lot of different calls uh, uh, and as you get the hang of the product you can also engage with the users and uh, the customers uh, on a much more level but make it a point to talk to customers or try to understand what the what the customers and the users think about your product uh, coming down to processes now these processes uh, include all the rituals uh, and ceremonies which are usually conducted in, in conducted in every product or team uh, in every product organization uh, what are you supposed to know about these processes and the rituals so what are the processes which are followed and what is the frequency of them for example if there's a daily stand up that happens uh, every day if there's a, a monthly planning meeting which happens uh, what is the release cycle what is the deployment cycle all of these uh, are the the rituals which most probably you'll be taking over now uh, so make sure that uh, you follow these uh, you you get a stock of these uh, processes there might there will come the right time where you will uh, also get the opportunity to improve on these processes but for now what is important is that you observe you understand what are the processes uh, which are followed uh, in the organization uh, if there's any kind of release communication which happens, so uh, uh, maybe a demo or a functional training which happens, uh, so you can check these with people, right? How frequently does it happen? Does it happen with customers or only with the customer facing team? How are the new releases communicated to the customers is something that you should be well aware of. As I said, start participating as a, as a spectator first. 
so uh, maybe you can join in on a on a functional training which is being conducted by someone uh, and you you observe you see how it is being conducted in the organization what are stakeholders that you need to uh, you need to involve or uh, what are some basic hygiene factors uh, which would be important in uh, setting up these kind of meetings and how they are conducted so start with participating as a spectator first uh you know one of the things that i i, I feel strongly about is you need to avoid saying things like hey uh, we used to do it differently in my previous company now you might be do you might clearly observe some uh, drawbacks uh, in the in the in 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 the new company uh, in the processes that they follow but there will be the right time where you can improve it uh, and you can suggest uh, give out new suggestion because no one likes to hear from someone who's just joined in that hey you know i come from such a great background and these are the changes that i want to improve change is always resisted so avoid uh, you know giving any kind of judgments to the uh, to the processes or any kind of activities that are already present uh, within the company criticism might not be appreciated by everyone so be very careful when you're giving out any kind of criticism uh, what you can do in this case instead is you make notes uh, and keep it to yourself uh, there will be a time when you can implement these and improvise on them later once everyone is comfortable with you and uh, it needs to be a slow change it needs to be a slow process because uh, many a times people will not take uh, sudden changes sudden big changes very kindly uh, other other important processes uh, that you should be aware of and these are uh, probably the non product related processes uh, it would include the company processes right so you know what what is the frequency of performance reviews or what should you take care of uh, our company conferences so every company might have a yearly conference uh, you know to to uh, get new customers or uh, or a networking seminar that they conduct any kind of retreats which are there in the company etc so make a note of all these uh, uh, other non product related events and processes as well uh finally make sure you complete all your hr and onboarding activities and paperwork so you know the banking details getting an i card if you have to do uh, stay on top of these because you don't want these to come and haunt you later on while you get uh, busy with your product related activities and finally uh, the last thing to observe in this case is the company uh, now we've obviously done our researches uh, on the company you know while we are in the selection stage so you must have uh, read a lot ask around people about the company things will be different once you join the company so an insider look into the company might be uh, very different uh, things uh, you might be feeling wow about your dream company might be very different in reality so this is also the time when you look and observe uh, as to what is the reality of the company uh, what are the company cultures that that are followed so you know is is it a very open door policy uh, is it a very informal kind of company culture or it's it's a very old school uh, uh, you know corporate kind of an environment where everything is supposed to be very formal what are the different policies right what are the different employee policies uh, product related policies etc what is the vision of the company i think that's very important that talks a lot but uh, how how much in adherence is the company in reality with the vision of the company which is being propagated uh, outside you know for marketing purposes uh then comes the financial health of the company uh uh so this uh, can be with with the help of recent news uh with the with the wave of layoffs which is happening right now i think it's very important that you understand the financial health of the company uh have there been any layoffs in the near past uh, do you, would you think that the company is planning any layoffs uh you know it you just joined in the organization so it's also important uh that you you know about these things before it tends to be too late ideally these things are supposed to be done uh, before uh, joining the organization but after joining it it also gives you a very different perspective uh and finally uh, the product needs should be aligned with the company's current state and direction uh, again uh, taking taking a very recent example uh, uh, amazon uh, laid off a lot of the new initiatives that it has been working on 
So uh, you need to be careful. You need to have a, a good eye that, hey, if have I joined that team, uh, which, which Amazon does not want to invest in, uh, anymore uh, right now. So these are the kind of things wherein the product that you're working for needs to be aligned with the company's current state and direction. Is it a very capital incentive uh, uh, product is it something which requires a lot of r d uh, etc cool the first month is now over uh, we have uh, uh, gradually moved into the second month of our new role as a product manager uh, these are the days 31 to 60 and i like to call them as the experiment days so why is it called as the experiment stage, right? Now the mantra for the next 30 days, that is the mantra for the second month, um, uh, month should be make mistakes and learn from them, right? Now this is your license. This, this uh, is your uh, ultimate card which you can use to make mistakes and learn from them. And this is exactly what uh, the second month is supposed to, uh, is, is for. You know, it, it's also the opportunity to make use of the I am new, uh, uh, I am new tag, right? Uh, if you uh, people also know that you're you're new to the organization, so any uh, small mistakes that you do uh, might be overlooked. Uh, so make full use of that. Uh, don't be afraid to make mistakes uh, and ask questions. So ask a lot of questions. I think asking is something that uh, actually should be done in uh, uh, in the observing phase. But this is the time to experiment, right? So if you have not given any product demo till now, maybe you take a, a, a smaller audience in terms of functional training or demos and give, uh, give take, make a take a shot at your first uh, demo. That would be the experiment, and no one is going to judge you if things go wrong because everyone knows that you know he uh, he or she is the new guy uh, or the new girl uh, in the product team. Uh, ideally, your contribution to the product should start uh, by the second month. So again, uh, even if it's in the form of an experiment, start act contributing to the product uh, and to the team. Uh, one more thing that you'll notice in the second month is that the guidance will start reducing, right? So uh, you might be having your manager or other stakeholders, you know, uh, holding your hand at, at every step, uh, making you feel comfortable. This will start changing uh, in the second month and you will be expected to start taking more ownership uh, of responsibilities. Uh, you also need to identify the areas where an impact can be made. That is in your company and in the role that you have. Uh, the exploration for this should be done in the first 30 days. And this is where you identify the impact and you start preparing as to how will I make an impact. So, uh, for example, if you see a particular feature, let's say the login page uh, does not really have an owner uh, or you see a lot of potential in, in things that you can do to improve or you've identified certain problems in the login page. This is your uh, this is your cue, uh, you know, start taking steps to own this uh, particular feature. Uh, finally, after exploration comes uh, 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 after exploration comes uh, experimentation. So you've explored a lot uh, in the first month. Uh, now is the time to experiment so that you can learn from these experiments and then eventually turn out to be a better product manager in the third month uh, uh, that comes across as uh, a product manager in this 30, 60, uh, 90 plan. Uh, pick a low impact uh, story, user story, right? These could be any low, low hanging, uh, low hanging fruits or any story which requires, um, I would say, little product intervention. Uh, it it does not really impact a lot of users. Uh, it's not very expensive to build. So pick such a user story uh, and start working. Uh, and and maybe you can even implement it, right? Uh, do this. While at the same time, on the parallel, you work on the big bank feature uh, that you eventually want to own and eventually or want to ship out. Uh, but uh, testing things out on a low impact user story will also help you understand better as to how does the, the product ecosystem work within the organization. Uh, as I said, it allows you to identify the mistakes so that they are not repeated when you work on your big feature. Contribute. Uh, now, this is the phase 
where you also start contributing. As I said, you'll be expected to start contributing. Uh, the honeymoon phase will, will slowly start to fade out. Uh, and you will be expected to contribute in your team's discovery efforts. So, uh, you know, this, when I say discovery efforts, it means product discovery. So identifying a potential product problem or identifying an opportunity uh, where you you might increase improve on certain product metrics which the company is actively looking for. You also start making decisions about features that the team will work on next. Uh, you know, uh, depending uh, depending on the kind of product setting, which is there, there's a very high possibility that an engineering team is associated with you, and the engineering team is dependent on you to um, you know get their uh, you know get their dose of uh, features that are supposed to be working uh, uh, worked upon. So start making decisions on what features the team uh, will be working on next. Uh, define a backlog item that your team will work on soon. So one, uh, you know, those those items, uh, they need to be in the backlog, which you would be presenting to your team uh, so that they can work on. Uh, the main difference uh, 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 between the 36, uh, between uh, the 30 day and the 60 day period is that the activities that you do, the activities that you undertake, switch over from observing to learn, from observing to do, right? So that, 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 that's one of the biggest differences. So from observing to learn, you are moving to observing to do. Uh, cool. So after this experimentation uh, that you've done and you've had your fair share of learnings by committing mistakes, by, uh, uh, by implementing things, the last 30 days in this 30, 60, 90 plan, uh, or rather the third month, would be the implement phase, right? Uh, now, this is where you're considered to be ready. Uh, you've had your one to two months of training. You've, you've done your fair share of the sticks. You've fallen. You've caught up. Now is the time to implement. Uh, and uh, the, the, the leeways that you had till now will slowly start to cease. So the implementation uh, stage has come, uh, two months have uh, elapsed, uh, it's time to get on with the action. Now, if you consider this stage uh, with, with, you know, with the, with uh, learning how to ride a bicycle, uh, I call this the phase where you start riding without the side wheels uh, of a cycle. As you can see uh, in the picture, uh, a young kid, uh, starting to uh, ride a cycle without the support of side wheels because the support that you've been enjoying till now will stop. Uh, you're no longer the, the new kid on the block. You have, you know, you're, you're already three months into the organization and the guidance will slowly start reducing. Uh, if you're not owning a big feature uh, by by this time, I think it's time you talk to your lead. Uh, you, you show the ownership uh, that you're ready to take on a big feature that you would be uh, owning and that you would be taking forward. Uh, this will, what this will show, this will show proactiveness. Uh, it also shows initiative and eagerness that you have to learn and grow uh, within the product role. Uh, the new beta tag is fading away. So, uh, uh, you know, uh, you cannot use that as, as your license to uh, get out of a difficult situation. So you need to be more careful now. Uh, uh, you need to be better prepared. A few of the common mistakes uh, that should be avoided in the first 90 days, in the first three months of your new role. Don't be anxious. Uh, it's, yes, it's a new role. Uh, new role. Uh, it's, it's fair to be nervous, but don't be anxious. No. And do, do not develop an imposter syndrome. I have seen this uh, many times when people joining a new role, they're too overwhelmed. Uh, you know, if it's a bigger organization, they're too overwhelmed if they'll be able to fit in, if they will know how uh, how this can be done or, uh, you know, how will, will they ever be able to know the entire product. Give it some time, uh, but do not fall in the imposter syndrome. You've done this in the past and that's the reason why you've been selected for this uh, position. Uh, have faith in yourself and you will be able to uh, do your best. Do not focus on things like uh, paperwork or reading too much product literature. Uh, for that matter, uh, you know, I, that's the reason I did not want to keep this webinar uh, very uh, literature driven and keeping this more of experience sharing, uh, uh, you know, uh, kind of a webinar where 
you learn from others uh, mistakes you you look around but do not really try to go by the book so uh, you know uh, it, there would be a lot of product literature around you don't overwhelm yourself with that go with the flow uh, talk to people learn uh, and uh, i'm sure you will be fine uh, do not spend too much time alone at your desk uh, th these 90 days are really critical in trying to in in building uh, building yourself uh, uh, you know in front of others so do not spend time alone at your desk move around set up uh, set up meetings with people talk to different people and get to know as many people as possible uh as i said uh, do not try to change anything right away uh, there will be a time where you know uh, where you'll command that uh, respect and people will be appreciative of the change but in these 90 days uh, in the first 90 days do not try to make any drastic changes uh, right away uh, unless you know you 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 you're joining in at a really high position uh, where you're supposed to be making changes it's a different thing in that case but uh, from uh, mid to uh, from from junior to mid level uh, positions do not make any drastic changes right away and finally do not boss around uh, even if you're a, you're you you're a product leader uh, i would strongly recommend that you do not boss around uh, you do not uh, make people feel uncomfortable with having a new boss around uh, uh, what's important is you be you remain humble you try to form as many relationships uh, with your subordinates with your stakeholders with your colleagues as possible and uh, people would not be very appreciative if you boss around them cool uh, uh moving on uh to the last part uh i think uh uh, I kind of have uh, have like a checklist over here so make a mental note of this or you can probably uh, take some pointers over here the checklist says uh, in the first 30 days uh, these are the three things that you should be doing uh, use your own product a lot uh, get very well acquainted with the product meet as many stakeholders as possible uh, talk to them learn from them uh, set up relationship uh, make relationships and conduct user research or uh, talk to the most important stakeholder that you have that is your user uh, for the next 30 days uh, that is uh, in the second month uh, draw a short term roadmap uh, which you would want to implement uh, for your product uh, and uh, determine the low hanging fruits uh, uh, that uh, you want to work on and finally uh, in the last uh, last month of this plan that is the third month Define user stories uh, or feature that you would want to work upon. Uh, uh, I'm hoping by this time you're ready to ship your first feature and at the same time work on the long term roadmap uh, that you have prepared. Finally, to summarize this, uh, the 306090 plan is, is a set of high level priorities uh, that you should be looking at uh, and the achievable goals, right? So your success can be measured, and this is where you should be measuring your success using the 306090 plan. Uh, you know, define the focus areas. Uh, so for each of these uh, three uh, packs of 30 days, you need to have very focused, specific uh, areas where you will be spending time on uh, in each of the 30 days. Uh, leave a positive impression. Uh, it, this is not something which has to be said, but if executed well, your thirty, uh, your your first ninety days will make a good impression on your employer, and that will, uh, you know, it, uh, even if you're there with the organization for five years, ten years, I think it will leave a very long lasting impression. So use these th ninety days to your fullest advantage. As I said, uh, it's asked in many interviews, so be prepared with one uh, and. Uh, the expectation is that by the end of 90 days, you are a com contributing product team member uh, with a firm handle on the on the product life cycle uh, uh, that you hired to maintain. Uh, I leave you with this. Uh, the first 30 days are to make in habit. Uh, the next 30 days are to make progress. And finally, uh, 90 days in, in, in 90 days, you're supposed to see the results of the habits that you've built and the progress that you've made. Having said this, uh, I would like to end this webinar. Thank you everyone for joining in. Uh, uh, if you want to chat something or if you have any questions, you can stay in touch with me on LinkedIn. Uh, until next time, bye-bye.